Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to install Webcon BPS 2022. Before I walk you through the installation process, I'd like to cover all the prerequisites to make sure you have everything you need before even launching the installer. As you will see, the installation itself is relatively trivial when compared to the preparations you need to make. So first of all, what will we be installing? We will install Webcon BPS 2022 in standalone mode. Modern web parts for SharePoint can be installed optionally later and will therefore be skipped here. During the installation, we will create databases, install Designer Studio, and the Webcon service. This forms the backend of our system. The administrator will use the Designer Studio tool to configure applications for end users. A key element of all modern Webcon BPS installations is the portal site hosted on IIS. This will be the end user interface that regular users will use to access applications through their chosen browser. It's worth noting that an end user does not have to install anything to access Webcon BPS. There are optional plugins that they can install, but those are not relevant right now. Let's talk about the software requirements. Webcon BPS needs to be installed on a machine with Windows Server 2016 or higher. It must have the activated role, Web Server IIS, and active Windows authentication. This machine will also need Visual C++ redistributable package for VS 2013. We will also need a separate machine with MSSQL Server 2014 or higher, with full text search feature. At this point you should also think about what authentication provider you want to use, as this will affect what accounts you need later on. For this demonstration, we will be using Active Directory. You can check out our articles on the community site for info on how to use other authentication providers. As for hardware, it will depend on your usage of the system. The installation manual and community site have examples of minimum and recommended setups. It's difficult to make specific recommendations because 100 users that use the system very heavily will need more resources than 10,000 users that register a few instances per week. Prepare Windows by installing IIS and enabling Windows authentication. The web server should also have dynamic content compression activated. After installing IIS, you can install .NET Core Hosting Bundle. At this point, you can install the portal certificate where the subject name or alternative domain name matches your desired portal URL. This will be the address of the site that your users will use. The certificate is necessary for HTTPS binding to make sense in the installation later on. For a scenario such as this one with Active Directory, you will need to create two accounts. One account with Logon as bad job permissions, this will be known as the application pool account, and another account with Logon as service permissions, this will be known as the service account. We strongly advise using two separate accounts for this. Having both of these permissions on one account and using it for both roles is not recommended. As for the MSSQL server, the absolute minimum role that you will need as the person installing is DB Creator and Security Admin. We will be using SysAdmin for this demonstration. No other SQL roles are necessary before starting the installation process because everything will be created during the installation. You will also need local admin permissions for the machine on which you are installing Webcon BPS. The installer will check for this. And with that, you should be ready to go. Let's go through the installation now. We launch the installer, choose a language, accept the license agreement. From the main menu, choose the first option for a new installation, and then the first option again for standalone mode. On the verification step, the system checks for all the components we discussed earlier. In the component selection, we choose to install everything except the modern web parts at the very bottom. We click next to confirm the selection and then click next again to install everything. This will take a moment. Next, we establish a connection to the SQL machine, enter its name and use integrated login. Then you can choose the database language and also choose the Use Application Pool Account option at the very bottom of the page. The next page is used to create a user for reading data from the database. For now, I'm going to be using the owner for this purpose. The first database to be created is the configuration database. It contains meta information about the installation. The default suggested name is bps underscore config. I will add my machine name as the prefix to that. Creating this database takes a moment, about as long as the component installation. The next database is the content database. This is the so-called main database that stores the bulk of the user and application data. There can be many content databases to one config database. And in such cases, the database acronym should be utilized so that instances from different databases aren't mixed up. The installer will suggest a naming scheme based on the name of your previous database. This is by far the longest installation step as this is the biggest database that we'll be creating. So feel free to go and grab a drink while this is taking place. As soon as the database is created, you will see a message that your current user has been granted privileges to it. This is good. You can manage this later, so click next for now. A second pop-up will then ask you if you want to create additional content databases. Here I click no. 
The attachment and archive databases are optional. When creating an attachment database, we need to associate it with a content database. I will create an attachment database, but skip the archive database for now. Next is the IIS website creation. So this page is probably the biggest hurdle, so let's break it down. First, provide the application pool account and password. This is the logon as bad job account from earlier. In the website section, the site name will be the name of the node in IIS Manager. This is only relevant inside IIS Manager. Finally, for the binding section to make sense, you will need the certificate that we talked about during the Windows preparation. The default HTTPS port is 443. The most important thing here is the host name. It will be the address of your portal. It has to match the subject name or alternative domain name in the certificate. The next page is a confirmation of your portal address. It should be automatically built out of the binding and host name from the previous step. If not, you can re-enter it manually again. Next is the user list synchronization. We are choosing none and then clicking next to skip this for now. This can be set up in Designer Studio much later. We don't have to worry about this now. Next, we will install the webcon service, provide the other account that you prepared, this is the login a service account, and finally activate the service by clicking next or on the start service button in the middle of the page. Apache Solar is the search platform we use in Webcon BPS. Fill out the host if it wasn't automatically filled out already. At the bottom of the page, two accounts will be created, the Solar admin account and the Webcon BPS account in the context of which certain actions will be carried out. Provide the password for both of them. The Webcon account is not super important as it can be changed later on, but the admin account is rather important so hang on to the password. After you are finished, feel free to launch Designer Studio and see if you can access the portal address in your browser. When you first launch Designer Studio, you may want to activate licenses. This is not crucial right now as you have a 90 day demo period, but the activator wizard is found in the top left corner. Sooner or later, you will want other users in the system. To do this, we will need to synchronize the BPS users list. The step that we skipped earlier. The configuration is found in the system settings under BPS users list. The configuration will be different for different authentication providers. Once your users are synced into the system, you can assign them privileges and they can start to participate in the system. Thanks for watching. I hope this video demystified the process of installing Webcon BPS. Good luck and be sure to check out our community site if you have any more questions. Goodbye.